And I want to turn to this story from the UK, financial conditions for British families falling at record level. The financial well-being of British families fell at the fastest rate in at least 14 years, according to data which underline how inflation and frozen wages are making life tough for many households. Rising food prices, record gas bills, landing on doormats, and stubbornly high petrol prices has combined with steadily increasing unemployment and low wage growth to create a miserable few months for many. So as we've been saying for, what, six or seven years now on the show, is this is why we are engaged in this battle against financial terrorism. This is the way they steal. They steal from you slowly, but sure enough, they are stealing. Inflation is everywhere a theft against the population. And some people prefer that, you know, to just slowly fade away into financial oblivion. The other others like the Silver Liberation Army engaged in a battle and and have saved and protected their wealth and their financial well-being by buying gold and silver. And sure, there were some 50% moves over the course of a few months during that the past seven, eight years, but they're now, they're not slowly dying in a cold room somewhere mm. in London. Look, less than 2% of the people listening to our shows and who watch us have any bad experience with silver or gold, and they're a write-off. Don't, don't even bother me. Don't, don't, <laughs> don't say anything. You, you don't deserve a voice at all. If you complain, you are just check into a mental hospital because you need to be medicated. You need you need a Thorazine because for antipsychotic medicine because you're brain dead. But having said that, um, the um, th there's good inflation and there's bad inflation. Now during the past 20 years, th 25 years basically post Thatcher Reagan, all of the debt creation also created GDP growth and rising asset prices in the form of house price appreciation. So people up until recently in the UK, were applauding inflation. It meant their house prices were going up and they were doing the wealth extraction. They were using their house as an ATM. They, were, they, they joined their, their mortgage account with their checking account. And every month, the value of their house would go up, therefore freeing up more excess cash in their account that they would go spend. Now that's so-called good inflation, asset price inflation. But um, there's that law of economics, the law of diminishing returns, or you can't beat a dead horse, uh, to put it more simply. Uh, the system becomes exhausted. It, it, it exhausted from all this debt money being pumped into the system and all this overconsumption and lack of savings, and that hit in 2007, 2008. And no matter how much money printing now the Federal Reserve is engaged with or the Bank of England is engaged with, they're not getting those house prices up at all. They're not moving those house prices. So, as a matter of fact, house prices continue to go down. There's no amount of stimulus that's going to move those house prices until they completely re return to their um, base uh, level of valuation, which is probably another 50% lower from where they are now. This means that that money that's being pumped into the system, it has bypassed the house, but goes into food and energy. So here you have your house prices going down because it was early in the inflation scenario and now it's petering out. But later on in the scenarios where you're, you're experiencing right now, which is that the money keeps coming in, but it only makes food and energy go up. You didn't notice food and energy were going up before because you were taking money out of your house to go buy higher food and energy. And you still had money left over to buy some liposuction or to go buy a trip, a vacation, a holiday to uh, the south of Spain where you throw up on a lot of Spaniards. Okay, now uh, the house prices continue to go down, but that money is still coming in, so food and energy is going up, so now you're experiencing a double whammy on the downside. Just like you had a double whammy on the upside, you've got a double whammy on the downside. You know, as night follows day, as right equals left, there's the green light and the red light and the moon and the sun, everything is a binary system. And now you have the opposite of the good inflation you experienced for 20 years. The problem is that after 20 years of having that good inflation, people, their whole generation grew up thinking that's the normal economic system. That's normal. That's normalcy. Normally, the business cycle, boom and bust, is every seven to eight years. 
So you don't have a whole generation tricked by thinking that that's the normal situation. You have every seven or eight years, people realize, oh my God, there's a downturn, there's a business downturn, and they make their adjustments accordingly, and you learn better for the next time. But here, this whole generation is completely caught off guard. They had no idea that actually things can go down in price. You know, in the UK, especially all those TV shows, how to get on the property ladder, buy, you know, don't miss out on getting property. You must own property. Mortgage your house, mortgage your kids. You're, 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 have your parents mortgage their house and their kids. Mortgage everything. You must get a house. You must get on the property ladder. Here now, turn your property ladder into more value. Go spend more money buying more marble tabletops and white goods. And that was a complete sham. You know who's responsible? BBC, Channel 4. They had all those TV shows. House, property, house, property, house. Pro property, 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 up your schwing, schwing, schwing. <laughs> you know, now you're trying to schwing, schwang, schwang and get it out of your hookah, hookah, hookah. But you can't because you're jammed in there so tight you can't pfft it out. <laughs> and as a result, you, you know, you're constipated with your bad house. But you need to eat, so you're getting fat and ugly and stupid. Well, there you go. That's the uh, financial analysis from Max Kaiser, the shring shring up the shring shring and the poop poop. That's right. <laughs> but, of course, the other thing is um, the North Sea oil is rapidly declining. But more importantly, Max, there is the cultural boom. Well, everything else is crashing. We do know that the 80s and 90s produced exactly zero. Well, Billy the Idol, yeah, they... Billy Idol. Yes, that's not for yeah, Billy Idol. Exactly. That's the best it could do. So the 80s and 90s were like, historically, we'll look back at them, you know, in 100 years' time, and they'll say, like, nothing happened. They won't even have a chapter, they won't even have a paragraph in a history book because nothing happened. People will think literally nothing happened then. But at least. Now, uh, we're starting to have some big cultural movements. This yeah. is certainly a historical sort of time. It will warrant at least a chapter so far in a history book in 100 years' time. Well, as we predicted on this show six years ago, that the collapse would have a twin uh, effect of bringing in a, a culture wave and a new... Uh, because all the culture had become so popped out and to the point of benign... And you know, negligence of uh, of of the um, anodyne uh, pablum oozing out of every pore of Madonna's sphincter, and you end up with basically nothing but a pile of phlegm and yesterday's asparagus soup. <laughs> and uh, now what we have is uh, a real culture boom, where the bands. This is where all you freaking bands and you listening on Resonance 104.4, you're watching your brothers and sisters get rich being lawyers and banking wankers. Now they're on the street, you know, uh, trying to give dogs blowjobs and you can cash in big time by uh, starting your own band and whinging on about how screwed up everything is in the world economy. Now it's your time. It's your time to cash in on the, on the, on the bust. Yeah, well, it's definitely time to go long Resonance 104.4 FM and yeah. short all those uh, property, property, property sort of radio, you know, groups like the BBC. I want to bring up Bankers versus Rioters, STFU, David Cameron. This is a remix from Quist TV on YouTube. Okay, here we go. Well, look, David Cameron has to decide whether he's going to allow plundering in the city of London to finance his economic growth, or whether he's going to outlaw plundering in the city of London and therefore outlaw plundering in the rest of society. You can't have both, David Cameron. So, hey, what's the phrase that you see online a lot? Uh, STFU. STFU. This school of banking schmucks. Look, David Cameron has to decide whether he's going to allow plundering the city of London to finance his economic growth, or whether he's going to outlaw plundering the city of London, and therefore outlaw plundering in the rest of society. You can't have both, David 
camera. You can't allow plundering in the city of London and then outlaw it in the ghetto that you created from the city of London plundering. So, it was the phrase that you see online a lot. Uh, STFU. So, STFU. STFU, David Cameron. STFU. STFU, David Cameron. Because you're completely off base here. STFU. STFU, David Cameron. STFU. total product of an elitist school of banking schmucks. Wow, that was fantastic. Who was that? Quiz TV? Quiz TV with Bankers versus Rioters, STFU, David Cameron. Oh, yeah. Well, Cameron now, we see that his premiership will be pockmarked by his own super smooth suppository inserted face that's been buffed to a high gloss from whinging in and out of Boris Johnson's hing shing. Oh, my God, that's a new one. What's that? How did you do that again? <laughs> I have to save that for later. You can't even repeat it. You forgot. You have to play it back to hear what you said. <laughs> we'll have to play that back. We'll have to play it back. But, you know, uh, Cameron is uh, really, um, he's, a, he's one of these... Uh, you know, uh, public school uh, jack jack idiots. But um, who, who's coming up politically? We got um, in in the UK. Anybody uh, looking good on the on the back benches that uh, might might strike a pose and uh, get elected and do something interesting? Or are they all just basically losers? Well, they're all losers because it's within the system. Anybody who aspires to be uh, an MP in this corrupt system. By the way, I was tweeting somebody from the UK, wondering why. There's something like 630 MPs in this country for yeah. this little tiny island nation. Yeah. Um, why do they need so many? And especially since they all just plunder the taxpayer with these fake expenses and, you know, it's these people living off the dole buying, you know, these are the real guys that the Daily Mail should go after with their giant widescreen televisions that they buy from with taxpayer money. Yeah, well, they're civil servants, you know, and uh, if you pay them right, like thirty or forty thousand pounds a year, no more than that, you keep them off the streets. So it's worth it. They end up, they take that money and they go buy uh, organic veggie burgers at Whole Foods, <laughs> and they uh, drink themselves to a stupor every night down there in the pub, and they're keeping a lot of uh, or organic veggie burger makers and uh, alcohol servers in business. So it helps the economy, and they do nothing. Uh, they are like the lilies of the field. Look, they neither spin nor toil. That, that's your typical British civil servant. They do nothing, but they don't hurt anybody. If you keep their salaries low enough, they can't, they can't make more than 40,000 pounds a year. Anyone who makes more than 40,000 pounds a year should have their head taken off. Uh, just as a, uh, uh, you know, a, as a normal procedure, they should probably decapitate somebody every day down there just to keep them in line. But just, you know, keep them off the street. Otherwise, they'd be looting, uh, you know, and breaking windows and acting, carrying on. And they'd be more of a, a burden to society. This way, you just keep those mildly retarded civil servants off the street and give them something to do all day. You know, give them a box of finger paints, you know, a, a game of Twister maybe, uh, some lollipops, you know, just... Keep him busy. Keep him busy. Keep Boris Johnson busy. If you ever gave him like a real job in a real company, he would probably, you know, accidentally launch a nuclear attack somewhere or, you know, he'd blow up a factory or something. Don't give him anything real, you know, real responsibility. I'm trying to find a story that I read and I, now I wish I had saved it. Um, who? It might be Brian Lenahan. I'm trying to... They were saying that somebody was drunk in the... Uh, in the in the bar within the that parliament in Ireland every single night during his uh, during the crisis and that this they basically were ruling drunk. Well, it, it was a liquidity crisis, so they tried to single handedly cure that by drinking all the booze in the bar. <laughs> 